Hi, I'm Sam, and I don't delete the default cube. That's right, you heard correctly. Unless absolutely necessary, I really go out of my way to avoid deleting it. Because the fact is, millions of default cubes suffer needlessly every year at the hands of cruel and callous Blender users, and I just feel like nobody's talking about it. Well, I have a solution for you. For just $6 a month, you can support and gain access to all the tutorial Blend files of a caring and compassionate Blender user that cares about the plight of the nameless default cube. It's me. I'm the user I was just describing, so if you do want to support me on Patreon, now you know a little bit more about me. Anyway, what I'm going to show you today is the Windows Smudge Shader that I came up with a couple months ago at least. And uh, I just thought it was a cool concept. It's basically a gradient that's soft at the top and hard at the bottom in a whole bunch of different areas. Here's what the notes are going to look like. Here I am in Blender and I'm just... Damn it! Here I am in a fresh Blender file and I'm just going to hide the default cube. There you go, little buddy. I'm going to hit Shift A and bring in a plane. And I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees by hitting R, X, and 90, and then hitting Enter. And then I'm going to hit G and then hit Z. So it's moving along the Z axis. I'm going to hold down Control while I do it so it just snaps to the grid there. I'm just going to put it at the top of the grid. And if we look at it head on with one on the number pad, we're just kind of like looking through the window here. I'm going to change it to the Cycles Render Engine. And if you have access to a GPU compute, it might go faster. Uh, it goes faster for me. And I'm going to lower the max samples here, just divide it by 8, maybe a bit more, divide it by 4 to 128. Um, it starts off so high, at like 4096, and it just takes so long to render. So usually I change that when I start a new file. I'm going to change the top right to the 3D viewport, make it a little larger. And I'm going to change the whole middle area to the shader editor and just put that material onto our plane there that was on our cube. So you have the principled uh, shader and that's it really. While hovering over your 3D viewport, hold down Z and move your mouse up just to go into rendered mode. And we're going to just start by putting the transmission to 1. It's going to make this a transmissive object, so basically a window. This is kind of similar to the glass. I'm also going to bring in a sky texture. So under world properties here, Next to color, where it's got that yellow circle, I'm just going to go sky texture. And I'm going to lower it down to, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, something like that maybe. Um, so the sun's coming from behind right now. That should be okay. You can see it's pretty rough. Let's turn down the roughness to like 0 0.1 maybe, maybe even just 0. It looks about the same. I'll just leave it at 0 0.1 for now. I'm going to hit Shift A and start typing coordinate to bring in a texture coordinate note. And then hit Control Shift, and while holding those down, just left click on this. And it's going to form a preview. And you can cycle through the different output options. And I'm going to rest on object there. That's going to be my uh, output from this texture coordinate note. I'm going to feed this into a vector, a uh, note, pardon me, a Voronoi node. There we go. I'm going to use the position output. I'm going to bring in this next node just for demonstration purposes, so you don't need to copy this part. It's a separate XYZ node. It's just to demonstrate what the position output of this Voronoi texture is doing. So if you look at the X values, we can see, you know, negative here and then zero and then positive. So basically just, you know, left to right, um, like the X axis. Same with uh, the Y, uh, top to bottom. Um, actually, you know what? This rotation isn't applied here properly. Yeah. So I'm just going to hit Control A and go rotation there. So um, let's start again. So X is just the X axis. Y is the Y axis. Um, you know, if it was rotated like this here, we would see the same thing. But since we don't, it's just kind of like a random assortment of values there. And then Z is along the Z axis. So I'm going to take this off again. Oops. And I'm going to bring in a math node, but not a normal math node, a vector math node, and place it right here. I'm going to open this up and hit S, which changes it to subtract. I'm going to plug the position into the top slot, and the object output uh, from that texture coordinate is actually going, going to go into that bottom slot. So if we look here, we can see it's kind of like a coordinate system in each cell now. You know, the original spot here, each one of these grades of color is now its own coordinate system. I'm going to put a color ramp on the end here. You can kind of see already we can get a gradient that goes across each cell, and that was my main idea when trying to come up with this shader 
uh, the idea of like drips because when you have a drip on the window the top is very soft and then the bottom is this hard shape so I thought I could do that with a gradient on you know each area there I'm just gonna put a few nodes in between the color ramp and the vector math node that's uh, set to subtract and uh, those nodes are going to be a vector rotate node and uh, actually just another subtract node. So I'll just duplicate this one and place it here and then gradient node. On this vector rotate, I'm going to change on the axis. The second value is going to be 1 and the third value is going to be 0. And then for degrees at the bottom, I'm going to change this to 270. I think that's what I had. Yeah, there we go. And then for this vector subtract node, Basically, this is just to soften up uh, the gradient there, so it's you know gray on the bottom instead of black, uh, just like this. So now we've got cells. Um, you know the top is supposed to be white or close to white, and then as it gets down here, it gets darker. For this color ramp, I'm going to bring that bottom flag up to 0.1, and this top flag I'm going to bring down to 0.21. I start masking this out, so I'm going to hit Shift A again and bring in a noise texture. I'm just going to come out of the object output of that texture coordinate node there. And I'm going to come out of the factor and go into a color ramp. I'm going to set the bottom flag to 0.41. And the top flag is going to be 0.49. I'm going to bring in a mix RGB by searching MIXR. And uh, this color ramp here is going to go into color 1. And this bottom one that I just made that's attached to this noise is going to go into the factor. Then I'm going to change color 2 to white. So basically what this does is it just masks it out, um, you know, from this noise texture into this color ramp. Basically, everything that is black is going to be this right here. And everything that's white is just going to continue to be white. So you get this mix right here. And if we want, we can change this here. Why don't we change this to something a little lower, something like 2, um, just to vary it a little bit more. It's just a bigger pattern that's masking it out, really. I'm going to duplicate this mix RGB twice and just place it uh, in two spots there. I'm going to bring in a color ramp and just place it here and duplicate it, just place it there. And from this Voronoi, I'm going to feed distance into the top one and color into this second one here, just in the middle. On this top color ramp, I'm going to set the black slider to 0.45 and I'm going to bring the white down to 0.47. On this bottom color ramp, I'm going to bring the white slider down to 0.47. I'm going to change the interpolation type from linear to constant. So these are basically just two more masks to help mask out this texture a little bit more. Uh, this mix RGB is going to go into color 1 on this second one. And the output of that one is going to go into color 1 on the third one. And then this mask right here, the one that's coming from color of that Voronoi, uh, the color ramp, I guess. I called it a mask, but the color output is going to go into the factor right here, and then this color output here is going to go into the factor there. And that's the one from distance there. So let's look at that output here just along the way. Basically masking that a little bit more, and then a little bit more until we're left with these right here, where it's basically the soft texture at the top of all these textures. And then as it gets further down, it's harsher. So one last thing I can do is maybe make a noise variation there at the bottom. And to do that, I'm just going to move this back a little bit, make an incision right here by holding down shift and right clicking and dragging and bringing in a noise texture and a mix RGB. And I'll connect the object output into color 2 of that mix RGB. And let's set the factor something higher, something like 0.9. Yeah, looks good. So we've got this output on that final mix RGB. I'm going to feed that into the base color and just look at this principled PSDF. So it's already something there. You know, it's a color influence. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is get another output going and feed it into a color ramp, just like this here. And um, this bottom slider, I'm going to change this to... Actually, I'm just going to flip it. So I grab this here and just flip it. And then let's feed this into the roughness. Move that back a bit. Okay, there we go. I'm not grabbing what I want to. There we go. So feed this into the roughness, and let's take a look at that. Yeah, that's looking good. Why don't we try an HDRI as well? Go to the world properties here, and instead of sky texture, I'm going to change it to environment texture. Then I'm going to hit open, 
and go to where I've got some HDRIs. I've got some free ones from HDRIHaven.com. Um, you know, check it out. A lot of free stuff there. So let's do um, maybe Cape Hill 1K. And I've got it set to 0.2 for the strength. So I'm going to change it back to 1. So it's a bit more normal there. Another option too is to just unplug it from that uh, base color. And now you've got a bit more subtle effect. Um, you know, it's up to you how you want to do it. If you want to add color in there as well, or just have the roughness kind of shining through. For a scale value, you could either change all of these values independently. You know, the noise, Voronoi, um, this noise, all those scales, and um, you know, maybe the mix factor as well. Or you could just maybe make another incision here and just go another vector math node and just set this to scale. I think this should work. Yeah, it works okay. Um, you know, maybe that's not what you want to do, but it's an easy way to set something up anyways, just um, to help you scale the whole texture at once. Here's a quick window frame that I modeled, and I just put the glass texture on there. And I'm going to change a few things just to set it up how I had it uh, for my original run through there. So I'm just going to change this scale back to 1 for now. And for the noise texture, I'm going to change this to 50, and the mix is going to be 0.95. And then this Voronoi texture, I'm going to change this to 30. And this noise texture down here, I'm going to change this to 10. So yeah, this is a little closer to how I had it originally. Um, maybe I'll change this factor here to something like 9, 8. Yeah, that looks a bit better. Um, you can see it's more realistic for the size of window. But changing up the scale, either on this scale texture here, or the, the vector math node rather, or all these individual texture nodes here, um, either method would, would work fine. Okay, that's it for today. Hope you could see what I was doing and how you might change it around. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. See what I can do to clear up any confusion you have. Thanks for watching.